morning and uh, namaste to all the eminent uh, speakers at acharya devo bhava and also to all the attendees who make this event successful year after year i have today with me an eminent panel as already been introduced but before we get started on this much required topic on great teachers make the best leaders i want to spend a few minutes on the conversations which i have been privy to since last one hour some of the very interesting thoughts shared by dr jyoti the principal and the academic uh, or director of education of uh, the shriram schools dr y s rajan sir and also dr ap jayaram and sir these topics and these thoughts which you have shared kind of sets a very good context for this particular discussion one such thought which i want to pull out is the need of a foresight and attention to detail i think that's the key role which will hit the nail on its head as far as this topic is concerned that great teachers make the best leaders in my personal opinion if we can have a fine balance as a teacher as an educator between foresight and attention to detail i think that is when we will reach a stage where we can generalize that all great teachers make great leaders mm -hmm. as they say it is the mind which can create anything before it sees in reality but for that to happen you need to have a vivid imagination mm -hmm. and that is where foresight comes into picture mm -hmm. then making it into reality that is implementing it in the real world comes mm. with attention to detail and that's the great responsibility which we all have as teachers because no matter what idea we have in the classroom we are one with the child and that's when we can create magic and wonders so with this small prelude i will request and invite my panelists a knowledgeable lot in their own right to share their perspectives on this particular topic and the way i have outlined this panel in the next 40 minutes is maybe the 3 to 4 minutes each one of us will share our perspective on this particular topic and then we will see if we can have a q uh, question and answers or some kind of leading uh, uh, deep diving uh, discussions from that so with that without much ado let me request dr nupun pawan bang to share her perspectives on this topic thank you chandrashekhar ji uh, namaste everyone good morning and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here the topic for this panel actually reminds me of a quote from william shakespeare's chaotic comedy twelfth night so some are born great some achieve greatness and some have greatness thrust upon them so similarly for a moment let's replace the word great with leader some are born leaders some achieve the qualities of being a good leader and some have leadership thrust upon them and this is absolutely true for people in any profession uh, on the one hand we might have some people who uh, who are naturally born leaders but on the other hand some might actually acquire leadership qualities through a lot of perseverance hard work and passion while a few others might find themselves in situations where uh, you know their leadership is thrust upon them but this is more true for teachers let me explain you know being uh, being a teacher by profession entails doing many things that may seem mundane to a to a teacher herself but actually they are done by senior leaders uh, if you happen to be in a company or mm -hmm. if you're a sports person or a politician you you actually do these things only if you are at the top at the leadership level so for example the teachers need to simplify to break down complex problems ideas concepts and explain it to their students all the time it is a routine job for teachers and mind you not all executives in corporations do it all the time they might have to do it once in a while but not always similarly a teacher naturally has a place of authority in the classroom they are used to being assertive they are used to having followers and by definition a leader needs to have followers 
In fact, you might have heard this phrase that all good leaders are good teachers. So all teachers already have some ingredients of being good leaders in them. And uh, if you if you have uh, if you see me today, you know, and um, whatever I am today, I feel it is because of the teachers that I had back at the Bishop Westcott Girls School at Ranchi. I remember trying to impress my teachers. You know, we wait to get notice. We carried notebooks for them uh, to the staff room. We ran errands for them. And of course, I always thought that these are fascinations of a young teenage mind. Um, but today, when I look at myself, the way I wear a sari, it is like Miss Varghese, or the way I speak, it is like Mrs. Lahiri. Uh, the way I analyze things clearly, stepwise, write in neat lines, it is like Mrs. Kaur taught me in my math class. If this is not leadership, then what is? The good teachers leave an indelible mark on their students and they are lifelong teachers, lifelong leaders for their students. So more as we go forward in the discussion, but I think it is a great topic and all teachers have many ingredients to be great leaders. Over to you, Chandrasekhar. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Noor. I think uh, you very, very uh, uh, craftfully brought out the point of imitation, how we all grow up looking up to our teachers. And as you said, all great leaders attribute this fact that they have been good teachers somehow. And in fact, it is more pertinent when you talk to the followers or the people who work with great leaders, because everybody says the same thing. He is a great leader or she is a great leader because he or she is able to teach us how to become better version of ourselves. I think that's where the attribute of teaching and teaching comes out. Let's move on to Dr. Mrs. Uh, Sudha Sahai and uh, listen to her perspective on this topic. Over to you, Mrs. Sudha. Namaste and uh, honor and pleasure to be here amongst this August gathering. A uh, very, very, you know, stimulating topic for today's discussion. But before we try and draw inferences, I would draw your attention to what the management guru, Peter Drucker, says about leadership. And according to him, in one of his books, and I'm not quoting, but just sharing the essence of what he says, he says, leadership is lifting of a man's vision to higher sights, his performance to greater heights, and of course, building of his personality beyond the normal limits. That's what he says is leadership. As the world progresses into knowledge economy, where knowledge is going to be the source of biggest power, I think the role of teachers and educators is critical because we are going to be creating citizens for this society, which is going to be driven by the principles of knowledge economy. I'm also sure that all of us have are familiar with these lines, Guru Govind Do Khade, Kake Lagun Pai, Balihari Guru Aapne Govind Dio Batai. So if the teacher has the power to show us the path to Govind, I don't think there can be a bigger leader. Also, let's try and draw the parallel between leaders and teachers. So I think the first thing that all good teachers do is that they take their children, their students on an inward journey so that the student is able to analyze the strengths and weaknesses, the inherent strengths and weaknesses. They also help students to dream big and to refine their thoughts and thereby their actions. Having done that, they work relentlessly towards helping those individuals find their authentic fit in the society and a unique one at that. But in this journey, they have the courage to take complete ownership of their success and failure. They don't throw up, teachers don't throw up their hands to say, oh my God, what do I do? They walk side by side. Aren't these the traits of a good leader as well? But what teachers do most importantly 
is that on a daily basis, they have deep engaging conversations with their students towards solving problems. They are not like the corporate leaders who maybe once in a year give those annual reviews or the appraisals. But these are happening on an everyday basis. And in doing so, they are not just imparting. When we as teachers walk into classes, we are not just delivering lessons in history, geography, biology. Along with domain knowledge, life's lessons are being delivered. And this is the sign of a very good leader. Because those conversations, as Dr. Rajan was mentioning, are the ones that help to build character. And I agree with him completely that if at the school level, we are not able to build character of the child three years, four years later in you know higher um, institutes of learning, I don't think professors or the teachers can do that. So the ownership is completely on school teachers. Most importantly, if we were to look at the entire thing in a larger perspective, you see, the youth of today is aching to find that one anchor in life. They, are, they really are aching to find that one individual who's going to see the goodness in them and will be able to draw out the best in them. While the society, on the other hand, is waiting to get that one leader, there is, we always in our conversation say, oh, there is dearth of good leadership. It's, I think it's the teachers who can provide that and be that link and help to bridge that gap. So having said all that I have, I think teachers are the best leaders. With that, I'll share more in the second round of conversation. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I think the verdict is out. Teachers are the best leaders. But I really like the couple of things which you mentioned, the authentic fit part of the whole thing, you know, walking side by side, engaging with students for a deep conversation. These things are pretty much everyday activity for a teacher. And that's what is expected from leaders in any organization, in any kind of an enterprise we build on. Let's go on to Ms. Asna Nafis, all the way from Doha, Qatar. And listen to her perspectives. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning. Assalamu alaikum. Namaste and Satsri Akal to this August gathering of leaders and educators. Um, I will start with the quote from Rumi. Yesterday, I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today, I'm wise, and I want to change myself. And I think it's very true for every single teacher who's been through the pandemic, every single teacher leader who's been through the pandemic. We realize that change is not going to come from outside, it's going to come from within. And each one of us as teachers or teacher leaders has really worked inwards and tried to bring change that has impacted continual learning and has ensured that our students move on in spite of the most difficult situations or the most unpredicted situations that we have been through. To speak about leadership, Yes, of course, every single teacher is a leader. Every single teacher impacts lives. But from amongst those, if you look, there are a few who can really take the bigger leadership positions. It's not every teacher who can become a school leader. It takes a certain skill set that is required to become a teacher leader. I'm sure each one of us have seen wonderful teachers failing as leaders because it, they are unable to probably it's extract the potential from the core team, from the parents, from the larger community, which becomes a big leadership challenge because as you grow up the ladder, it is just not students that you are dealing with. Yes, in every single way that you are a teacher, you are a leader, there's no doubt. But every good leader is a teacher too. Every good leader, just not in the teaching industry or the institutions, Everywhere else, if you see successful leaders have always been successful teachers because they do not work from the confines of the offices. They move out, they interact, they mix with the real stakeholders 
and give them life lessons which probably are not possible inside the four walls when you review or give you know a uh, appraisal which is an annual affair if you are there on the ground on the you're doing spade work definitely i think it makes a difference and it adds on to your leadership talent when it comes to talking about vision mission it's all nice on papers as long as you as a leader has not understood and has not acted on it which means that you are not an armchair person but a person who's really in the act only then will you be able to influence lives in a way that probably an ordinary teacher would not be able to do so there is i think a certain x factor to anybody who's looking at taking up school leadership positions especially during these very difficult times qualities like communication risk taking calculated risk taking being able to understand and see what is it that you want to achieve within the next few years setting your short term long term mid term goals right is definitely leadership whereas an, a teacher definitely does all this i'm not saying that she is not aware of her leadership position but many a times a choice of a wrong leader as the head of an institution brings down the institution completely destroys its image and those mistakes can happen by anybody at all having worked in organizations that have invested in training middle level managements hands on to make them think from a larger goals and larger platform i have realized that it is not always that a good teacher could become a good leader but a good leader could always be a great teacher so i end with that and i hope that we will continue to deliberate on this thank you thank you so much uh, ms asna in fact i am reminded of one particular saying and uh, that sums up all the perspectives what you shared what you do is so loud that whatever you speak i can't hear so as a teacher we need to live by example and that is where is the first step towards becoming a great leader so thank you for that uh let's let's go to ms uh, lakshmi anapurna for her perspectives ma'am over to you on this topic thank you dr chandrasekhar first of all i would like to thank dr jyoti reddy and the sri ram universal school for inviting me to this webinar to share my views and i look at it both as a sharing and a learning platform you know from the kind of uh, 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 this course that i've just heard from dr jayaraman uh, you know dr vyas rajan and others mm -hmm. uh, coming to the topic as dr nupur uh, uh, mentioned i believe that you know every child every student they come across at least 40 to 50 teachers during their years of schooling but throughout their life they remember only two or three teachers forever and those teachers who become role models also in their lives for those students as she mentioned that she would like to imitate those specific teachers you know uh, the reason being they have actually impacted the lives of these children in such a way that it also shows them the direction in which they have to take we have also heard of of students who like a subject because they like the teacher you know and uh, that is where i believe that it is these teachers who can be considered as leaders when we talk about leaders um uh, i don't think we need to uh, focus only on the school leadership team uh, somebody can be a leader to me who has impacted me in my life i would call them also a leader if you see a leader is one john maxwell says a leader knows the way shows the way and goes the way okay? and even bhagavad gita also very clearly has outlined actionable items for the leader a bhagavad gita says that the human relation development and the qualities that a leader should have are very clearly outlined saying that is what is important for a leader uh, and uh, all those who teach uh, teachers who come into the profession here again uh, all of us also agree that you know there are some teachers who come by choice many of them come by chance and it is those who come by choice 
are the ones i believe you know go on to make a leader because the passion and dedication that they have for the profession automatically helps them to ensure that they are learning and growing and ultimately they are the ones who become the leaders and these are the great teachers that we have seen in our lives also so uh, i think this is what i i wanted to uh, present as my opening statement thank you so much madam well i think one point is very clear when we are talking on great teachers make the best leaders by no means we are restricting the leadership to a leadership role inside the school we are not looking at a principal or a vice principal or a coordinator and we are not saying that you know can a teacher who is good at her subject or a language qualifies to become a vice principal or a coordinator or a principal that's not the thing so i thought after the end of the first round let's yes. make that very clear yes. so that there is no confusion on that mm -hmm. now very interesting level of the discussion where we are shifting gears is the topic is great teachers make the best leaders can we generalize what we are doing is pulling out the word can and putting it at, ahead of the topic can great teachers make the best leaders mm -hmm. right now in this the panel is going to deliberate on one perspective which is how can you walk out of this panel discussion to become great leaders because we are assuming you are all great teachers already right in your own subject number one second the saying goes somebody's loss is somebody's gain for a long time schools today have operated with that mindset which is if you are a great teacher you get pulled into an administrative responsibility and then you become more and more administratively involved in the operations of the school thereby teaching is losing a great asset and at the same time there is again a very fine line of divide where you say all the administrators are best at their job but they are doing something which they are not good at right now and the ones who are actually doing the teaching job or for whatever reason are not best that's why they were not pulled into the admin section now that divide also needs to be bridged so today in this next 15 minutes of the conversation the panelists are going to dwell upon two things can great teachers become great leaders and how can we bridge that divide which if it exists in our schools should vanish so again i will do a round robin i will start with dr nupur and from then on we move to the other panelists so dr nupur Thank you, Chandrasekhar. Once again, you've uh, put the question very, very aptly. So, uh, you know, let me let me speak from my experience of being in the higher education sector. Uh, there are two things that I would like to point out. The first is that do we, as as educational institutions, do we attract the best of teachers, the best of faculty to be in our educational institution? especially in india you know i studied in singapore and us for a very long time so uh, when i came back to india i did believe that in india too the uh, the salaries of teachers the salaries of faculty is going to change over time because if you are to attract the best people you must pay them more however it's been uh, almost 20 years that i'm back to india and i don't see much change it's definitely improved but not in uh, but not in line with the way salaries have increased in the industry as a result teaching profession is not by by most and here we are talking we're not talking about the 10% really passionate and great teachers we are talking about the average people in india who don't really aspire to be teachers so the first thing that i would like to say on this forum and i know that a lot of management educational institutions management may be there at this uh, forum so please take heed of the fact that to get the best teachers who can become great leaders either at the school level or leadership positions make an impact influence policy making improve the way other teachers uh, operate the other teachers teach uh, the uh, you know support the growth of other teachers increase the quality of instructions to get such people you must must attract such people and one way of doing it is to pay them more 
the second thing that I would like to point out, and this is research based, uh, this is from the uh, Education Leadership Journal and the author Stephen Farr, who has authored a lot of papers in this area, he identified six leadership principles in high performing teachers. So if any of your teachers who are here, but you think you don't have these uh, principles in you, you don't have these traits in you, it is, it is time that you start thinking about inculcating them. And they are all, as I said, that leaders can, leadership can be acquired. So uh, it's it's not late for anyone. You you can take cognizance of these six uh, leadership principles and uh, try and work towards acquiring leadership skills. So one is that setting ambitious goals for yourself, for your students, and for your school. Uh, the second one is getting students invested in learning. So uh, you know you might have all of you cricket fans here. I'm I'm sure most of us are have been fans of Sachin Tendulkar and continue to be. And if you are a true fan of cricket and of Sachin, you would have heard of Ramakant Acharya too. But there would be no Sachin without a Ramakant. So, uh, you know, you people must be invested in the learning of the students if you yourself want to be recognized as a great leader who has actually helped create great leaders because that is the true essence of being a leader, developmental mindset. You must plan purposefully. So now this is something which most of the teachers do. They are very planned. They, they have a syllabus. They know that they have to complete the syllabus. But the key word here is purposefully. So it's not just about completing the syllabus. It is also about planning purposefully so that there is maximum learning for all stakeholders and then executing it effectively. Now, when I say executing effectively, it has become even more appropriate, the word effectively has become more appropriate in the era of schooling happen over Zoom calls and, uh, and Teams uh, or Google Meets, because uh, all teachers, I'm, I'm absolutely sure all teachers have faced the challenges of teaching over technology. So how do we, and there's some research that needs to happen here. It's still too early for, for too much of research to have gone into this. How do you make teaching more effective over uh, over screen because you know this is this probably maybe the first time it has happened that uh, you had to teach on screen but it will not be the last time so you must learn to execute uh, effectively whatever teaching needs to happen continually increasing your own effectiveness and again in the in this VUCA world you know very volatile uncertain chaotic and ambiguous world mm -hmm you must continually become more and more effective, adapt more to the changing times and the changing mindset of the students because you must connect with them. Gone are the days when uh, you could teach exactly the same way you were teaching 10 years back because the generation changes in five years nowadays. So you have to be on your toes and continually change with your students. And of course, work relentlessly like any other leader. In fact, uh, you know, recently I read the autobiography of Indra Nui, and uh, I would recommend, recommend everyone to read because read that autobiography because she's written it beautifully about her experiences of being a leader. Uh, working relentlessly in a leadership role is, is non-negotiable. So uh, Chandrasekhar, I think these are, the, these are the key points that I would like all teachers who are attending this forum and the management uh, people who are here to take away from, from my thoughts. Thank you so much, doctor. I think those six principles uh, are quite uh, binding on all of us. And uh, that's a good starting point for us to make the transition from being a great teacher towards a great leader. Let's go to Ms. Sudha for her views on this discussion. Okay, so uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar, you know, I have one opening statement to make to the two questions that you posed to us. Life probably does not operate in compartments, nor does teaching and leadership. So these are not two diverse paths that one needs to tread. And that I say as a teacher of 25 plus years. For every teacher, I think every day there is a class of 30 that she needs to manage. And I'm saying, I'm purposely using the word manage because she is the MC there all by herself. 
and it is only this profession if you see where as a new joiny you're not a part of a larger team right first day in school 30 children are handed over to the teacher or maybe more and the teacher herself himself is responsible answerable accountable which means the institution the organization already has faith in the leadership abilities of that individual on day 1 right so if we were to break it down as to what is it that a teacher normally has to do in a day i would like to begin by just sharing some of the good practices of the shri ram schools what makes tsrs the brand it is it was set up you know with the vision of late padma shri mrs manju bharat ram but who are the people who are the most effective and efficient translators of a vision the teachers in school it wouldn't be a tsrs wouldn't be a tsrs without these translators in every classroom every minute of the day so it is the culture of the school that inspires excellence it is the culture of the school that draws people to tsrs it is the culture of the school that fossils like us who've been here from day one till now and don't think or look anywhere outside this can't survive anywhere outside this is just because of the culture that we value that's precious to us and all of us jointly and when i say all of us every individual teacher has contributed towards building that culture that is leadership in every good organization the leader's <laughs> job is to build the culture that will inspire and motivate people to do their best to be the best versions of themselves the next thing that every teacher does is of course there is a great culture and there is a great legacy but it's all going to start slipping downhill if expectations are not made clear and if the expectations are not high so the teacher definitely every day in school sets very high expectations and she demands that every child is at least able to reach that goal the path may be different the time taken could be different but the goal post does not shift so there are there is a pedagogy which i'm sure all of us are aware of as educators differentiated teaching learning which is implemented in classrooms but the goal post does not shift a lot of scaffolding can be provided a lot of hand holding can be provided but it is excellence and excellence alone because every individual has that strength every individual has one unique quality which the teacher or a leader needs to explore and bring out additionally great teachers help to prioritize and here i would like to quote the example of all of our recent experiences in the wake of the pandemic we all realized that we have to sacrifice the short term goals for the longer good of the children and i am a school teacher so i continue to use the word children for my students <laughs> so we realized we worked on the premise that you know we gave ourselves the mantra maslow before bloom and what it means is that the psycho socio emotional needs of the children need to be met first before the academic needs are met with so the short term goals were sacrificed we knew that the teaching was not happening you know as it should happen the best marks were not coming or being achieved by children but that took a back seat because we were all there in full strength out to hold our children and their families and also all our staff members and probably in a crisis that is also the role of a good leader additionally what more does a teacher do on a day to day basis she definitely as a very good leader has a growth mindset she is learning every day he is learning every day a good teacher and we as teachers we are constantly revamping our lesson plans our you know methodologies because we are never satisfied we want to know the best what is happening in the world around we want to bring it back to our classrooms 
only then a tsrs will be a tsrs forever so the growth mindset which is an essential component of good leadership is an essential component of a good teacher she definitely comes with a growth mindset and works assiduously towards achieving the best every single day empathy is something which we cannot forget good leaders good teachers they both need to come with a lot of empathy with a lot of empathy they need to throw that safety net around their people to say okay even if you fall i am there it's okay don't give up trying and therefore i would like to conclude by saying that you know good leaders or good teachers teachers become good leaders and leaders are good teachers if and only if they are able to transform lives and touch lives in a positive way thank you so much i think uh, my takeaway is mass law before bloom is going to stay for a long time not just for 2020 2021 i think every school every institution should put mass law before bloom mm. and that's the way you can look at growing and uh, budding you know bringing the budding children into full blown version of themselves thank you for those perspectives let's go to ms uh, asna nafees for her answers to those two questions uh yes um, chandrika chandrashekar uh, what i would say is that if you look at leadership it is all about learning leadership and learning are two concepts that are typically not you know indispensable to each other they have to go hand in hand a good leader has to keep learning a good learner will definitely become a good leader too and if you look at any leadership i think leadership is about not creating blind followers if that is happening that's not leadership at all it is about creating more leaders a successful leader is one who has people who can think for themselves and become good leaders and it's always said that when the leader is absent if things are going well your leadership is tested already that means you have left a legacy and to leave a legacy there are certain characteristics of leadership that you must possess one is to force like uh, i think mrs sahai mentioned that to think at the moment what is required at times your long term goals may be something but if it requires a quick change of thought and communicating it that effectively to those team of teachers or staff that you are handling or to your class as a teacher if you are a teacher within the class communicating it and being able to you know justify why those things have to be done immediately like during the entire pandemic she mentioned about maslow yes i thought the men- mental well being of our teachers and our students and our parents was more important than anything else unless you are not happy within no amount of leadership can bring any change in any person you have to create happy students happy parents happy teachers only then as leaders we are able to convey or you know communicate that this is what we are aiming at so the mental well being of each one who's coming into school i often say that you know that we have this statement at our school uh, at, at the reception in our school that you are entering into a happy world please leave your worries and come in you're welcome if you leave your worries and come in and i think that is what is very important that as leaders we create a worry free and stress free environment so that leadership even within teachers is a happy learning experience not only for the teacher but for the class that is handed over and like ms nupur mentioned uh, yes definitely salaries are a concern but salaries are i think a secondary concern what kills a teacher is not giving them a proper challenge to look up to and achieve so if you're not able to supply that challenge to your teacher you make the teacher do the same thing over and over again you are killing potential so leadership is about grooming people by giving them ample challenge so that they look up and dig into their leadership qualities that is reflect within what is the strength that i have that i could probably improve as a leader 
whether it's within the classroom, outside the classroom, with the team of teachers, with the parents, with whomever. So leadership is about bringing the best out of the team that has been given to you, rather than reflecting on what's not, not right. I always remember something that one of my mentors mentioned to me. Focus on what's right in the person. Everything else will move to the horizon. You, if you keep focusing on what's negative, it's never going to help you. So I think good leaders, and I, I believe every single teacher is a good leader because she is able to motivate her students by not focusing on what's wrong in the child, but what's right on, in the child and helps the child become a better version of him or herself. And in today's fast changing world, I think it is also required that leaders are data driven they understand what data is giving them, the feedback it's giving. It's not the do all and then end all of everything. If you're to go only by statistics, you land in big time trouble. You have to be cautious enough to use data sensibly in order to devise policies. That's again, a leadership requirement. And of course it goes without saying, tons and tons of passion for being a good leader. That is, you have to be a good teacher if you want to be a good leader. First, passion for your own profession, whether wherever you are, whether you're a teacher or in any other field, and being empathetic and compassionate towards the people you deal with. I think it makes a big difference. And definitely any good teacher who has all these qualities of setting goals, communicating well, having the confidence, having the capacity to give positive feedback. Feedback could always be a very difficult session for anybody who's in a leadership position. To sit down and say, you know, I believe this, 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 this is right, but this needs to be improved, requires certain skill sets. And I think good teachers are capable of giving those sort of feedback and good leaders who are risen from being good teachers definitely have this ability to do so. So overall, I would say that if you are able to create new leaders, you are a successful teacher. And I think every teacher creates a lot of leaders. If you look at your own alumni, ma'am mentioned about the alumni, one of the good practices that we have uh, probably taken up at DPS Modern Indian School is that we invite all our alumni, and I remember the keynote speaker also mentioning this, our alumni are allowed to take 15 days to months of internship during the short breaks when they come back from the universities at our school with the help of mentor teachers so that they understand what it takes to be a teacher within the classroom and what challenges these people face. And I, I must say that even if this has impacted two teachers to join the profession, my job is cut out as a principal of a school, that I don't wait for the government to take action, but I take action at my level so that we attract the right type of quality students who are looking at teaching as a profession. Because if you, I think all of us as educators agree that very few people are attracted towards this profession. It's a certain breed of people who are attracted towards this profession. And you... And ourselves as change agents, if we are able to, you know, give an opportunity to our children to understand the value of this, our job as uh, can be, you know, a little calmed down and we could be rest assured that a good quality or there won't be a paucity of talent coming into this institutions. I won't call school an industry. It is definitely a service providing institution. So I think if we as leaders are able to think out of the box, we should have a good supply of you know, talented people coming into the profession. So this model was taken up by the previous secretary of CBSE saying that it's a very replicable mad model and it can be used anywhere and uh, it should be encouraged so that we get the best students coming back into this profession. So I think good teachers are always good leaders, definitely, but not always the same, they go hand in hand, but I can't say that every single teacher who's a good teacher in the classroom can be a great, great leader also. So I end with that. Thank you so much, thank you. And I think uh, that's a very, very innovative way of uh, not only taking care of the current generation, but also the future generation. Because this, as rightly said, leadership is an ongoing concern. It is not something which ends with you or which begins with you. All right. So let's move to Ms. Lakshmi for her uh, views and answers on those questions. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dr. Chandrasekhar. Uh, I believe there's always been a debate 
about this leadership skills are they inborn or can they be acquired and uh, i believe that you know some or other traits of a leader are there in everyone and uh, inborn leadership traits cannot be hidden for a very long time it's only a matter of time before they are identified and uh, or believe in believing your own abilities and capabilities that brings to the fore the actual leadership skills and the traits so here again i come back to the question of choice and chance when it comes to the school uh, uh, school teachers becoming great leaders uh, i'm sure all of you also would have observed that those who come by choice are the ones that generally go uh, and become great leaders but those who have made their chance into a choice also can become great leaders but uh, at the same time we have also seen how schools nurture leaders uh, uh, leadership traits in teachers in their teachers and there are schools which ensure that their leaders the or the uh, people who get into their leadership position are all home grown and not brought in from some outside agency or some uh, from an external agency so when uh, when the leadership skills are nurtured in an individual and then the the teacher goes on to become a leader it, it you are giving a, a sort of a comfort level to the teacher or a, a a message to the teacher that here is somebody who cares for my growth and encourages the teacher to even put in her best foot forward and when we talk about the leadership we are effectively talking about the traits that a leader exhibits in the work and how the work gets done from their team how are they actually able to get the work done from their team uh, in, uh, however good their personal effectiveness is however competent they are professionally both of these will work only and only depending upon one major factor that is how good they are in building relationships with the with their team even for a for a teacher the uh, uh, how she is able to manage a class of 30 or 40 children that she is having in her class works only and only because of the relationship that the teacher is able to build with the children so how uh, and uh, all of these again we are all coming back to talking about the traits that a leadership has that the leadership exhibits and here i uh, i would like to take examples of uh, two people uh, who have actually shown what a leadership sh should be uh, one of them is uh, abdul kalam and his famous speech where he talks about how a leader should lead by example and show how success can be uh, uh, to be uh, managed and how a failure needs to be managed where he gives the example of uh, dr satish dhawan from whom he says he has learned how to manage success and failure and these are skills which no school college or university teaches there is no curriculum for such kind of traits these are all things that are learned from Uh, 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 learning from people when you come across good great leaders and emulating them and imbibing these skills uh, i mean this is a very famous speech that uh, the, the dr abdul kalam gives where he says when the mission failed dr satish dhawan actually uh, met the uh, press and told them i am responsible not my team i am responsible i will again deliver next year and when the next year when the uh, mission was successful he let his team take the uh, press and uh, get the you know uh, a publicity that they wanted so i mean these are things that a leader actually needs to exhibit i've come across another person who uh, uh, i would like to share here he is actually the owner of an engineering college there are more than 3000 students in that college and uh, what i have seen is he knows the name of every single child in the school in that uh, college and he not only knows the names he knows what each one is good at suddenly one day he would come and call out that child and say that student and say look today i read in the newspaper that this, this is what that particular university is coming up with this will be good for you instantly go and apply it. 
I mean, this is such, these are the things that make an impact in the child's life. A owner of an institution who has more than 3,000, 4,000 students in his institution still remembers what I am good at and what I can be, uh, what can be useful for me in my life. So these are the things which are, uh, which a leader uh, exhibits and what one learns but to becoming a leader. And uh, when we talk about the um, pandemic, I think the VUCA that, uh, uh, that one was talking about was exhibited across the world, I would say, when the pandemic came about, that how volatile and how uncertain, how complex and how ambiguous everything has become. It was actually exhibited. And we teachers and the school leaders became Alexa to all the parents, I would say, where just like how an Alexa would give an answer to every uh, every question that everybody asked, the questions asked were the same, but the answers expected were all different. And like an Alexa, the entire teacher fraternity, the school leadership fraternity stood and answered everybody is what I would say. Over there, giving all different answers to the same question from the parents, which, which was what was expected. And uh, uh, so, uh, 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 again, coming back to the thing about how a, uh, how a great teacher can be a great leader, which is basically how one, what are the traits that one looks for, and how we build relationships to take them and nurture these people to become great leaders. So, every great teacher, every teacher who's a real teacher can be a great leader and will be a great leader in their life. This is what Thank I you. would like to talk about. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am. Well, I think uh, with that, we have kind of uh, rounded off the conversation on uh, the topic. Okay. Great mm -hmm. teachers can definitely make to be mm -hmm. the best leaders. Mm -hmm. So you've heard from all the panelists and I will not go into summarizing each of their points because mm -hmm. each of those points are worth its weight in gold and let's mm -hmm. not uh, mm -hmm. try to reduce its importance. But I want to give you my perspective in the last one minute as I conclude this. See, for me, it is not about qualification. It is not about designation, which will make you a leader. I mean, let's go back to the days where there was no BA. Okay. Swami Vivekananda. I don't think he went on to get a BA for himself or his teacher, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, never had a qualification as a degree. But... The one thing which Ramakrishna Paramahamsa spotted in Vivekananda and he said, channelize your energy, your rage, your frustration towards the right direction. That stood him in good context and went on to become Swami Vivekananda. The cycle does not end there. It comes a full circle when Swami Vivekananda meets Jamshedji Tata. And then he tells him, channelize your wealth in the right direction, which gives birth to IISC in Bangalore, which we all know, or even uh, the Rockefeller Foundation in USA, again, channelizing the wealth in the right direction. So now what I'm trying to come here at is as a teacher, we all have that inner voice, that intuitive voice within ourselves, which will operate whether you are sitting on a particular position or not, whether you are teaching a particular class or subject or not. Even a physical education teacher has an intuition which works to the best of its ability on the playground in the school bus. I think listening to that inner voice will make the shift in being a teacher, a great teacher and a great leader. So with that, I would like to conclude this panel conversation as to each one of us have that inner voice. And when we listen, all the other list of items which are listed which have been spoken by our panelists are all tools. But remember, tools should help your class and not the other way. Classroom is not meant for tools. Tools are meant for the classroom. So with this, I want to thank you all for this opportunity. Thank you, Sriram Group of Schools for giving this opportunity. And on behalf of the entire panelists, we say that every teacher can and should become a great leader.